Okay, so here we are at the vote house in an area where there is an outbuilding, um, or was an outbuilding, and the remains of that outbuilding are lying in the ground in the form of a buried foundation uh, and artifacts associated with its use and demolition. So what we're trying to do is uncover uh, aspects of that, of those remains of the house, as well as collect data in areas surrounding the house to help us understand how, when, how it was used, and um, by who, if we can figure that out. Uh, the th there are several theories connected to it. One that it was an, something called an ancillary house, which would have perhaps been used by aging uh, owners who have forsaken the responsibility of being heads of the household and would have moved in here from the main house behind. Uh, it also could have just been a simple outbuilding used for various uh, utilitarian activities like uh, you know, keeping, you know, caring for animals or processing animals or storage or uh, any basic activity like that. And then finally, our, the third theory we're considering is that it could have been used as housing for enslaved laborers who documents tell us were here for the first three families, which spans about the latter half of the 1700s. Um, it could have been used for any and all of those, and we're hoping the archaeology will help us we dig in on a grid, and as you can see throughout the site, there are several strung out square units. They're each a meter on the side, uh, and they are all in relationship to one another on an on a arbitrary grid that we've laid over this excavation area. Thing to research. Yeah, where'd it come out of, guys? So let's look at each unit one by one, and we'll see what we're learning so far. Unit number 14, right here, we have the best evidence so far of the house foundation. Um, let me borrow this stick. And if you can just follow the line of the stick through here, you can see a very straight line continuing into unit 15 here. If we go north here, you can see some exposed stones there. That's from a previous excavation, which took place on the site about 10 years ago uh, by Hunter Research, a uh, cultural resource management firm. And so they, ident they located the wall there, so we think that these will connect in one way or another. All right? So these large stones were, are interesting to us because we think that they probably were up on top of this and in the process of demolition were dumped in here. So this would have been the inside of the house over here. That would have been the outside and telling us that they, don't, they dropped the house into the cellar that was, or into the, the pit under the, when the foundation was in to help fill it up, which is a common practice. So what we're looking for here by extending this, we originally did this square, by extending we're hoping to find a corner that will lead over in that direction. So let's go over here. This is excavation unit 12 and 13. 13's just begun, so there's not much to say there. But if we look carefully with our imagination, we might be able to see the line running through the center of the unit of a parallel wall to the one over there. And so we're going to work on exposing more of this today, see if it can come out looking a little bit like that. And that'll give us the, the east-west walls of our structure. And it is 
fairly small. If you pan over, you can see from there, that's a meter. There's one, two in between, and then three meters. So it's roughly 12 to 14 feet wide, so, which is what we expected, but also something to consider about trying to figure out what it was used for.